automated testing in a CI-CD pipeline is a great way to catch regression bugs early on. Today, I'm going to walk you through setting up Cypress tests in a GitLab pipeline. That's our secret weapon for totally crushing regression bugs. So let's get going. Log in to your GitLab account and create a new project. Head over to the pipeline editor, and we can start to create the first draft of our pipeline. So the first thing we have to figure out for our pipeline is which Docker image to use. Let's do a quick search to see what Cypress provides. There are two main options, Cypress browsers and Cypress included. The first one has just the browsers, while the second one includes both the browsers and Cypress itself. I don't have any preference over one or the other, so what we can do is that I'll show you how to set up them both. Let's make a job for each image, starting with Cypress browsers. For this job, we will kick things off with a clean install using NPM CI, and then just run our tests, nice and simple. If your tests need a web app running in the background, this is the place to start it. Since we don't have a web app in this example, we'll leave that part out. Now, let's set up the Cypress included job. The difference here is that we don't need to install Cypress, it's already in the image, we just run the tests. For this image, we also need to clear out the entry point by setting it to an empty string. This image has a default entry point that runs the tests automatically, but in a CI-CD pipeline, we wouldn't see the logs. Clearing the entry point lets us run Cypress manually in our script and see the output. And that's pretty much the basics to get Cypress running. Not too much to it, right? But do not worry, we are going to dive into way more detail later on, things like reporting and cross-browser testing. But wait a sec, we are getting ahead of ourselves, we do not even have tests in our repo yet. So, let's cancel this pipeline run for now, I am going to clone this repo to my local machine so we can whip up a quick test. Now that the repo is on my machine, let's install Cypress. I'll open the Cypress launchpad and create a sample test. I think we are happy with the example that Cypress offers us. It goes to the example.cypress.io. I'll run that to confirm it works. Now let me tweak this test quickly. I'll add a title assertion, but I'll intentionally check for the wrong title. Here's why. When I am playing around with a new pipeline setup, I actually like to start with a test that's going to fail. It is way more helpful to see how the pipeline handles a failure versus just a success. Let's run that modified test now. And there we go, a failed test just as expected. All right, we are all set test-wise, time to push this repo up to the cloud. Hold up, looks like node modules isn't in our git ignore file, let's fix that real quick. After git push, the pipeline started to run immediately. And the pipeline works. The job that ran on the Cypress included image got the correct error message. Let's check the other two. Both pipelines got the same error. So we have got the Cypress included image working, but I'll simplify this pipeline a bit. So I am going to configure the pipeline to just skip the second job for now. I think showing one way is enough for now. And plus the Cypress docs recommend the browser's image. 
Next up, let's get test reports happening. First, we need to install a reporter, and then we will need to tweak our run command with some new parameters. Next, we need the artifact section to tell GitLab which files we want to be able to download after the run. By default, GitLab only saves artifacts when the job succeeds, we need to change that so we get reports even when tests fail. Then, we define the paths where Cypress stores its reports. That's it. Let's push the changes and see if everything's set up correctly. Pipeline's done. Let's click on that Browse button to check out the artifacts. First, let's peek into the Cypress folder. There should be a screenshot in there from our failing run. And there it is, screenshot captured. Now let's check out the HTML report. Nice, there's our HTML report all set. Now, let's modify the pipeline to support cross-browser testing. One way to do this would be to duplicate the Chrome job for Firefox and Edge, but I want to show you another way, a bit more streamlined, using a parallel matrix. First, I am going to create an array variable, let's call it Browser, and we will list out the browsers we want to test on, Chrome, Firefox, and Edge. Then, we will use that browser variable to set the browser parameter for our Cypress run, and also to customize the report file name so they do not clash. If you are cool with having separate reports for each browser run, then that's all you would need. But I like to have everything nice and tidy, so I am going to add an extra job to merge these reports into one single awesome report. For the image for this job, I am going to use Node Slim. It's a super lightweight image, like a fraction of the size of those Cypress browser images. Using smaller images can speed up your pipeline a bit, and for this merge job, we are just running a few npm commands, so we do not need much. We will use the needs keyword to make sure this merge job only runs after our browser test job is all wrapped up. In the script for the merge job, we need to install the merge tool and the HTML report generator. Then, we just run the merge command, and right after that, generate the final HTML report. Quick note on the merge command, it's called Marge, just like in The Simpsons, not a typo. Important thing to remember, this merge command, it has to run every time, even after failing runs. Same goes for publishing the artifacts, always publish them no matter what. Then the paths for artifacts, and we are ready to test this cross-browser setup. Alright, all our browser test jobs failed, just like we wanted. Let's quickly check that the error in each of them is indeed the title error we set up. Now, let's hit that browse button again and see if we have a merged report in our artifacts. And there it is, all the errors from all browsers nicely merged into one report, sweet. If you are looking for ways to really speed up your pipeline, caching is definitely something to look into. So, let's quickly check what the Cypress documentation recommends for caching. Here's one way to do it.
And here's another example. Let's grab this second one and copy it over to our pipeline. All right, caching section is in. Now I am just eyeballing this node modules path here, and I do not think that's quite right. Here's why. When you run npm ci, it does a clean install. Clean install means it wipes out the node modules folder completely, so caching it just to have it deleted right away is kind of pointless. What you actually need to cache here is .npm. That's the real caching folder for your node dependencies when you are using npm ci. Now if you were using npm install as your install command, then yeah, node modules would be the cache folder. But best practice for CICD pipelines is usually to use npm ci, so let's stick with that advice. One optional way would be to define the cache folder as a parameter, but we'll stick with the way that Cypress docs gave us. This ci commit ref slug is just a GitLab variable that holds the branch and tag info for your pipeline. In our case, for our main branch, I am guessing the value of this variable will be something like main protected. But it's just a name for the cache, and the cache will always be used in the main protected branch. Something important to keep in mind is that caches are only saved when the pipeline run is successful. So I'm going to remove this failing assertion now. That's it. Implementing a cache is easy, but the thing you need to do which is a little harder is that you have to verify that the cache actually makes your runs faster. So let's see what we get. First thing you need to verify is to check from the logs that there is a section about saving cache and it contains the correct folders that you want to be cached. We have Cypress and NPM folders, so that's correct and there are several matching artifacts. Another thing to note is how long it takes to save the cache, which is 19 seconds in our case. That time is spent compressing things like your node modules folder and uploading it to remote storage, like Amazon S3. Now we can compare the values. Running the pipeline with cache took 1 minute 42 seconds at least. Running the pipeline without cache took 1 minute 26 seconds at the fastest run. Now, this could be just because the very first time you run with cache, it does not save time, cause there's nothing in the cache yet. So, let's run these jobs again, give the cache a chance to actually kick in, and then we can get a real comparison. All right, second run with cache, 1 minute 38 seconds. Okay, so it's a tiny bit faster than the first cached run, like a 4 second improvement but still slower than our non-cached run. Let's collapse these menus here and take a look at the timings for each section. Restoring the cache took 14 seconds, and saving the cache took 20 seconds. So, for caching to be worth it, the time saving in executing the step script part needs to be more than those combined times. Let's jump over to a non-cached run and see how long executing the step script took there. In a non-cached run, executing the step script was 38 seconds. In our cached run, it was just 15 seconds. So yeah, caches are definitely working under the hood making that part faster. But in our specific case, because we do not have a super intensive build, the overhead of saving and restoring the cache is almost negating the benefit, making the overall pipeline time a bit longer. One really good way to compare results over time is to check out the CICD analytics menu. You can see a graph of your pipeline durations there. After you implement caching, keep an eye on that graph, see how your pipeline times are trending. Let's look at one more thing to optimize the cache. I know from experience that Cypress cache is quite large. It includes the browsers themselves, which are just copied, not compiled. Caching those might not always be the most efficient use of our cache. 
To get an idea of the size, let's just quickly check the Cypress cache size on my local machine. Half a gigabyte, it takes time to compress and upload that. So let's try running our pipeline without caching the Cypress cache, just the NPM dependencies. Saving the cache only took two seconds, much faster, but let's run the pipeline again, just to make sure we still get a cache hit on the NPM stuff. This run, 1 minute and 24 seconds, fastest run yet, 2 seconds faster than our fastest non-cached run. So with this tweak, our pipeline got a tiny bit faster, like 2%. For our light build, caching gains are small, for complex builds it's a different story. The key takeaway is understanding how to implement and analyze caching. Setup is easy, but if it's not helping your speed, keep things simple and skip it. The last thing I want to show you in this video, is how to set up pipeline schedules. Just give it a description, set a time zone and use cron syntax to define when it should run. This for example, means every day one hour after midnight. Cron syntax can look a little cryptic at first, but do not worry, there are a couple of handy examples you can just pick from using these radio buttons. Then hit the Create Schedule button, and there you can see that the next run is in 23 hours. And that wraps up this tutorial, hope you found it helpful. If you did, definitely share it with your colleagues, catch you in the next video.